I am the Commissar. That's my name. Forged Alliance Forever. That's the game. And who have we got with a claim to fame? Well, it looks like we have another 3v3 ladder map on the cards today. So we're going to have a supreme sextet of commanders with the hot team here in the northeast and the cold team here in the southwest. In the forward position for hot team, this is Lagavulin16, whom I imagine to be a fan of whiskey. He is 1595 rated and UEF in orange. Behind him, anti-clockwise, we have B1 Adam, 1599 rated, also UEF in burgundy. And last but by no means least, in fact today's highest rated player, in the clockwise position we have Lunishko, 2195 rated and Cybron in red. And now for the colored team. In their forward position, this is Sulfur1, he's 1721 rated, he's Seraphim in mauve. In their anti-clockwise position, at the back we have Flying Olsen, whom we can see having moved forward to his Hydro there. He's 1729 rated, he's UEF in dark blue. And last but not least, in the clockwise position is Cold Team's highest rated player, Azuros, at 1927 rated, he's Seraphim in baby blue. And a quick look at the map. There isn't much reclaim anywhere, so these expansions are going to be key. And apart from this one at the very back for each team, all the main expansions can be ranged from the water, so even though the ponds are quite small, I do expect that Navy is going to play a key part. Now, we have some early aggression coming out here. Selenes from Sulphur are heading for this expansion and this expansion and they're obviously hoping to pick up a few unguarded engineers because it looks like both Azuros and well, Sulphur rather than Orson are sending engineers out to these expansions but this one is in for a nasty surprise because Lonishko has headed out in person to pick this one up with his comm This one, however, might have more success because there's quite a big bird queue for this engineer and if this Selene can interrupt it and kill the engineer then Adam's going to have to do a lot of re-expansion bringing out units to guard and then moving these engineers out to take their place. But where Sulphur is being aggressive on the land Adam is being aggressive in the air. We have an early bomber heading out, and I reckon it's doing the same job as those Selenes. It's probably hoping to pick up this engineer here from Azuros. Which he should see with the scout and then be able to come and bomb Azuros planning for some navy there. As we said, it's going to be important because of where the expansions are. But this expansion is going to be denied, at least for a while, as the bomber flies by and hits it. Up here, though, this little Selene is going to pick off the NG that it came to kill. Boom. Thereby denying this expansion for a few minutes while Adam comes out to re-expand. Now have we lost that bomber? Yes it's been shot down but there's another one coming in. Transport which will follow in a minute but right now eyes need to be on this bomber because this could be a brutal pickup and I think he's going to get it. Boom! Four NGs taken out in that pass. He could aim for these. He's coming back for this one. There are Inties out from Azuros, and they will pick up the bomber, but not before it takes out another of Azuros' NGs. This drop 
comes to the north and is going to land on this island. He's planning to drop here. And on the other side, Orson has already brought out NGs to claim this island. So Code Team making an early bid for both islands. But Hot Team in the water first. Lunishko already has a naval yard up. But Azuros has been spotted and Lunishko has a bomber on the way coming to take it out. And I think we're going to have to go to split screen here. On the left, these poor engineers just trying to build a factory, but boom, the bomber from Lunishko comes in. Lovely hover bomb kills both of them. And where's it going to go? But meanwhile, on the right, Lunishko tries to drop this expansion and immediately build a PD, but there's a PD already down for Orson, and so Lunishko just picks the boys up and flies away again. On this side, the engineer is picked up by the bomber, but defending Inties are able to take it out. And where's Lunishko going with this? Well, he's coming over here. Okay, this looks like Lunishko has denied the expansion. So let's return to single screen. As this transport, trying to land over here, gets shot down by Inties from Orson. So looking quickly at the overview, Cold Team are in the water on both sides. Lunishko only on this side, and while we do have a naval yard coming up from Adam here, it's not finished yet. So it feels like Cold Team have a slight advantage in the water, but Lunishko already has a frigate out, and nobody on the Cold Team does yet. But we have multiple runbys going on in the top here. On one side, Sulfur is sending farms into this expansion he raided earlier with the Selene, and on this side, we have these three strikers coming in from Orson. <clears throat> Adam dropping out here with NGs to try and claim this island. We'll come back to it in a minute. Because these tanks are getting some decent damage done against the Nishko's mexes. They've killed a couple so far. They've killed that, that and that. And at the moment they outnumber the Nishko's tanks. Over here one mechs has been picked up by this raid, but it's been stopped, so some eco damage, pretty nice. And these boys are going to be picked up by tanks produced here before they can do any more damage. And while we're here, we note that we have T2 air out from Lanishko, so maybe we'll be seeing some shenanigans over here. The frigates from Lanishko are massing in number, but there are subs being built by Orson down here, and they are likely to counter the frigates quite well because of course frigates can't shoot back but subs do damage quite slowly and so it's going to take a while for them to work through the production of all these frigates and Lanishko has a torpedo launcher here which can defend if he pulls the frigates a bit back behind his naval yards. In the middle Orson has advanced in person with the gun and he's trying to force a cancel on Lager. But Lag is going to finish, and Adam's got his com coming in there as well, so I think that Austin is going to be forced back in this position. And indeed he is. There is spam from Sofa to which he can fall back, and Sofa's on his way with a gun of his own, but right now it behooves Austin to just get out of there. Now, these subs are really trying to swarm the frigates, and as yet, the torpedo launcher from Lunishko isn't in range, but that is a lot of frigates. One of them goes down, and as it goes down, Lunishko notices and he pulls back. Immediately, the torp launcher gets into range and starts firing, and since the most recent patch, these T1 torp launchers have been pretty tough, and as you can see, they're going to get through that bunch of subs quite fast and Lunishko has another one going up at the back. The comms engage in the middle. Two on two, decent spam on both sides, but Lagavulin is retreating his spam where Sofa is bringing his in. Lagavulin brings it back, but Sofa has more and Adam is also naked and in danger. He's into the red. He's taking shots. And he heads forward, trying to do as much damage with the combat as possible, because he is not getting out of this, my dudes. 
boom! There is that explosion of nuclear fire as Adam is our first ejection at 10 minutes on the dot. On the left, we remember that Adam had dropped over here, but Azuros has headed in in person. He wants this island back and he's going to take it with his com. And there has been an attempt to drop by Lanishko around here, but Azuros is in he's clear it up. Over here, the torpedo launchers have been joined by torpedo bombers from that T2 air factory that Lanishko put up. And now, thanks to that, that support from the air, these subs will be far less useful and the mass of frigates from Lanishko can push in. Olsen does now own this entire island, so we are back to both side islands being owned by Cold Team. But this looks good for Lanishko. Let's go up here, as this one frigate is probably going to be countered by this frigate and whatever else is produced here. And the sole naval yard that Lanishko inherited from Adam up here is under bombardment by a lot of frigates from Azuros. So, Navy and Island on the left side, both in control of Code Team, but look at this. This is a lot of damage coming out of these frigates. And there are top launchers being put up and Zooey's coming out to defend from Sofa, but Zooey's are not a good counter to frigates and they are quickly torn apart. And those torpedo bombers are coming in to help out the frigates from the air, since as yet there's no anti-air turrets in here and just the anti-air on a few miserable little frigates and boom, look at that, that top launcher was that a top launcher being? Oh, it must have been a new one being targeted. But the top bombers are coming to help out. And we do have a destroyer on the way for Nonishko, who is definitely doubling down on keeping this island and this pond locked down from the water. Now, during all this, Sofa and Orson have come forward, and Orson's taken a bit of damage because there's this T2PD here, which he almost killed, holding them back. But thanks to Lagascom, his spam, and this PD, it's been enough. And we now have pillars out from Lunishko, from Adam's old base, trying to raid into Azuros expansion. But Azuros has also reached T2 Air, and he has a Vothu which clears up the raid, and Sofa is going to counter-push with Ilshevels. And the battle lines continue to be drawn in this southern pond as the top bombers patter a few shots down from the sky. There are now railguns in the area. And that will make the top bomber slightly less effective, but that first destroyer is on its way in, and that's going to be a game changer. And there were also gunships from Lanishko trying to sweep Orson entirely off this island. And with no AA there, I think they're going to. But this destroyer, this is going to really be what makes things a mess for Cold Team here. And they have no answer to attack present. This naval factory is on its way to T2, but I think, and there it goes, reaching T2, but I think that's going to be too little too late, and it's not going to have a chance to produce anything before this sort of sweeps it up. But we have a raid, so let's go to split screen. So on the left, we have Self pushing in with quite a significant army into the base that used to belong to Adam. On the right, we have those gunships having wiped out that little base down there, coming round and smashing the engineers that are assisting that naval yard, but there's flak coming in here, there are inties. And these gunships look like they're going to go down, but that naval yard is now unassisted, essentially, and is at risk. Zooey's are also shooting up the destroyer and have got some work done, but they're going to go down to the frigates, there's another destroyer here. Most of that raid has been destroyed. They have claimed a mechs, but there's now T2 on the field for the Nishko. And 
they creep around. This T2 is obviously not being microed, but look at this. The T2 naval yard on this side is down. This naval yard is down. It looks like Lanishko is going to completely overthrow the right hand pond. And finally, that raid is cleared up. However, Code Team have had much more luck in this pond because they now have cruisers out which can bombard from the which can bombard from the water. So let's return to single screen. It's my feeling that this cruiser bombardment is really going to get work done. Two Mets is down already. They're only T1, but t these cruisers have basically nothing to stop them, and there are T2 Mexes out here that are going to... But we have multiple prongs of the attack from Lunishko. Let's see what he's going to do with it. On the left, Riptides are coming out to counter these cruisers, and with no destroyers there and only a couple of frigates, that might just work. But on the right, you know it, you love it, naughty naughty, walkie walkie. Out come those Salems, and having already wiped this expansion off the map, they're looking to get some pressure further inland, and there are capped Tito Mexes that are at risk here. The Navy from Azuros retreats on this side over here, but the Riptides are coming after it. There are a decent number of frigates, but they should be enough to hold off the Riptides, but Lunishko will have to be careful with his positioning, and Azuros will have to be careful not just to lose these cruisers if the Riptides push in. The Salems are falling back as a third one joins them, and we have a decent horde of Yenzines coming to counter and try and swarm them, because of course these Salems can't fire backwards. Yenzines, of course, also Amphitanks. We give Salems a lot of flak here, because... Well, actually we don't, because, you know, they're on the they're on the water, on the land, flak shoots up into the air. But... Would we... W w would we argue if a amphibious unit what that was land-based had legs and could retract them and walk under the water in fact we don't Percy's do it bricks do it so why do Salem's get all the hate meanwhile though these riptides have withdrawn because there is now a Sera destroyer out and that will easily carve its way through the riptides on this side the Salem's have turned around and now there are five of them walking out and that's really going to be a problem for Cole team to stop but again the pond on the left fully back in the hands of Azuros with these riptides not really able to do much and under fire from the destroyers we do have a push from Lagavulin down here but it's being shooed away by gunships It's quite a decent push with T2 shields and a few missile launches, but that's a lot of gunships from Azuros, and Vothus are among the best of the T2 gunships. However, we now have broadswords on the right countering the Salems here, so T3 air out from Orson. Meanwhile, though, those gunships that defended against the raid are now performing a raid themselves, but we have ASFs out from the Nishko and they're coming in against the Vothus. The Vothus pick up a Mex. They're gonna pick up another Mex. And air support from Azuros also includes ASFs of his own showing off the Nishkos. So we might see a third Mex go down over here. Meanwhile, the Salems are back in retreat. Many of them are dying. We can see wrecks from them being dropped on the land over here and the Salems are fleeing this broadsword meanwhile look at this damage from the gunships they've smashed through all these mexes the cruisers are getting work done up here and what is there to stop these gunships one ASF and a flat tank this damage is brutal Meanwhile, we have Strats also out, f providing air-to-ground damage for Orson as he heads forward to push back at this wave. And look at this. How many mexes is that now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three
four, five, six, seven, about to be an eighth for that gunship raid. I don't like sending this strat in this far though. And with this beachhead now fully established down here, what can Coal Team do about it? They might need to bring some forces back. And the gunships keep on going. They are now eight mexes in. A line of T1 anti-air is being rapidly thrown up by engineers to try and shoot them away. But the damage is done. I think we can afford to go back to single screen at this stage. Now this beachhead does look great, but there are now three broadswords and a strat raining far down on it. And as yet, we don't have any cruisers out for Lunishko who might otherwise be in a position to, um, to get rid of this air pressure. And he's got a T3 land HQ here, producing bricks to come into the water, but he really needs some air defense, because look, these, these broadswords, they've just hoovered up that beachhead, and they might drive the Nishko entirely back into the water. Quick note at the Ecos, Cold Team are 100 ahead after that amazing gunship raid from Azuros, but that may not last if this pressure keeps up along with this pressure. They haven't yet had a chance to rebuild here. On the other hand, there's no way that Lanishko is going to take this area back while this army of cruisers with their nasty Seraphim guided missiles rain fire down on anything in this radius. Ha, Adam agreeing with me there that cruisers are needed from Lunishka, who does have a bouncer here to defend this emplacement from the gunship attacks, but who really needs to bring his units forward. And just where Lunishko raided around here earlier in the game with his T2 gunships, Olsen has brought his gunships to handle this expansion, though he hasn't taken it all out. He's left these engineers in the factory and that may be a mistake because it may allow Lunishko to re-expand. He's also left this engineer. He must have just given them an order to um, pootle around there and not actually attack specific things because this engineer is just rebuilt. We have a drop of bricks on the way from Lunishko but Lunishko thinks it's been seen and it has been seen because these ASFs from Olsen come in and just tear it apart so that's quite a nasty loss for Lunishko. However, that cruiser that Adam suggested is finally out and we can see another on the way in the factory there. So that may be enough to drive away these broadswords. Azuros has really set up a huge base here and he's getting it teched up. And Yenzines are heading out, presumably in to um, capitalise on the damage that his navy has done here. And we have another big Vothal raid out from Azuros, supported by a big horde of ASF this time. So that's pretty nice. And the ASFs pick up a couple of stragglers from Lunishko, but Lunishko is defending with... T3 Sams in his base and he's setting up quite the air grid. However, setting up the air grid isn't the same as having an air force and Azuros descends upon this expansion of the Nishkos and that's a T3 mech he's going for but these bouncers that have been built at this factory are able to take out all of Azuros gunships before they even kill a single T3 mech so good defense from Lunishko. So far, doubling down on making his com a Rambo machine with nano gun and T2. And we have our first experimental of the game started. Orson has started a fatty down here in his main base. And not a moment too soon, because this is quite a significant army, including a lot of spearheads. 
under shield cover and with flak foe. They will be able to bombard this firebase and drive the cult team back. I like spearheads, they're not used enough in my opinion. I think we ought to see more of them. And here we are, seeing more of them. So um, that's, that's a nice thing to see on the field. And Lager is bringing Percy's in to provide cover so that this spam can't just push forward. Because we do have a couple of Othiums here. But talking of spam, look up here. Those Yenzines that Azuros was producing on his island base are now coming in. But there's a big force of Riptides out from the Nishko to meet them. And Azuros is wisely pulling back. But he has a lot more coming across the water here. And it is going to be quite the battle over this presently no man's land. Speaking of quite the battle, the spam from Code Team plus two comms, Austin's and Sofa's newly ramboed com, charge forward. But this is a lot of shielded T3 from Lagger, and I don't know if it's going to be enough for Code Team to break through it. it isn't. Lagger is barely cracked and Sofa, despite the toughness of his comm, is going to have to fall back a bit. Navy for Lanishko is still doing much the same as Navy for Azuros up here, in that it's keeping the other team out of the water, it's keeping them from claiming this expansion, but it hasn't got much pressure inland yet, and this is quite a horde of riptides which are coming and might be able to hit these cruisers if they're fast enough with three destroyers in defense fast enough is going to be pretty fast indeed this this mass of zooies and yenzines is quite significant and i like this extra little naval yard going up as as your springs and engineers to reclaim all the damage he's been able to do and pick up some extra mass these Riptides are going for the cruisers, but the cruisers simply fall back, leaving the destroyers to form a front line. And look at that, the destroyers are just carving apart the Riptides. The Nishko is not going to get any damage here, and there's that fat boy finishing up for Orson. And while the Riptides are fighting the Navy, the force of Yenzines and Zooies charges in. As Zuos finishes off a chicken, and we'll check on that in a little bit. But rather than using these Riptides to try and stop this force, Lunishko is pushing in to see if he can break maybe this base or some of the Navy. But there's enough frigates and enough Destros and enough still flooding across the water that the Riptides have to fall back. And meanwhile, Azuros is getting work done with his push. Is he going to take out this mech here? Because that's T3 and would be a lovely pickup if he could. And there's more here. T2 point defense is being thrown up by Lanishko. The T3 mech does go down. The Riptides now surround the Zooies, there's, but there's still a few Yenzines over here that can do more damage. However, that's a lot of T2 point defense. I think it will successfully defend the rest of the mechs, especially if these T1 bombers that are now coming out are able to get a lock on these remaining boys. But that's a lot of eco that Lunishko has been forced to put into T2 point defense. Down here in the middle, that fat boy is pushing forward, and this formidable force from Lagavulin is being forced back. Especially as the fat boy is supported by several T3 shields, which are going to be very hard to break through. Especially as the whole force is moving, and therefore not a perfect target for the slow firing spearheads. And that's yet another chicken from. Azuros, where are his chickens? There's one, and he's just finished another one back here, so quite a big push, but not to be outdone on the experimental front. Lunishko has finished... what's he finished? 
Ooh, well he's finished and nuke is what he's finished, but he's also got this monkey coming around here. It's been spotted, but of course, they'll have to be careful about watching that because the monkey has stealth. Will this nuke pay off? It's already half loaded, so... It could be a game changer, and I don't know if they've seen it. Well, looks like they have seen it because they're focusing this SMD hard. And not to be content with just a nuke in terms of standoff tactics, the Nishko, as well as building a Mega and a nuke, is also starting Tech 3 artillery. Where is that Tech 3 artillery going up? I haven't. Here it is. The fat boy creeps forward. We do have a few of those bricks that we saw being created earlier coming up onto the land here. How long before we see a response from Orson? And there's an Omni here, which we'll see them. But these mexes, this T3 one and this T2 one, could be at risk. However, gunships, broadswords are coming out. And since these bricks have no anti-air defense, the broadsword should take them out. Meanwhile, the fat boy pushes forward, and we have a massive wave of T1 bombers coming out to try and take it out. It also holds its position, which means that these spearheads can get fire down on it. The T1 bombers are carved apart by the flak, but that's what's expected, and they've got enough damage done on the fat boy that the spearheads and the next wave of bombers are able to take it out. However, ASFs come in from Azeros and Orson, and there are now two chickens there. Which Azeros gives over to Sofa so he can micro with the rest of his forces. And while we have some T3 ground units here, these chickens don't really have a great deal to stop them. Now, these bricks have managed to go through the water and get in the back, and they are getting mechs damage done. This mech is dead. This mech is dead. This mech looks like it might die if these broadswords don't kill it up in time, but there are now enough broadswords to finish off the bricks. More have trickled in, but I don't think they're going to pose much of a problem. The Nishko finishes that megalith, and only just in time, because these chickens are getting dangerously close to the front line. Here comes the crap. But Lagavulin's com is a very dangerously out of position here, and the chicken might. Well, luckily, the first chicken, luckily for Lagavulin anyway, the first chicken goes down. And that's a lovely position for its Iron Storm to inflict damage on the forces of Hot Team. The nuke is fired. We'll see where it goes in a minute, but we've got both the monkey and the mega, a new monkey and the mega taking out the chicken, but the ion storm is going to get some damage done. And I don't think that this anti nuke, this anti nuke is loaded, well assisted from Code Team. Is it going to be able to pick up this nuke? I think it is. Zip, there we go. Back to the fight here, where the Ion Storm has inflicted some damage here, but the Disruptor is almost up. And we now have a monkey and a mega walking forward. And remember that first monkey? Well, it's now out of the water here and ready to get damage done. Monkey here, yells Orson. And, you know, he's not wrong. There is a monkey there. And now in the north, it's not just Yenzines, but Othiums as well, which are flooding across the water, and this push is going to get some work done. Because these are only Riptides in defence, and the Othiums are going to defeat the Riptides, no problem. In the south, the monkey has slipped into the water and might pop out and get damage done. A wave of torpedo bombers are sent against it, which is quite nice, because, you know, while it's in the water, it has no answer. To those torpedo bombers but I think we have to look at both of these things 
So here come the Ophiums, advancing on Adam's old base, and here comes the monkey, but that monkey is under threat from both torpedo bombers and broadswords, but Lunishko sends his air to defend, and the monkey pops out of the water. And look at all these delicious T3 mexes that the monkey is going to be able to eat. Here it comes, stalking forward. It's not actually firing yet, right? There we go. The mexes are just going to get smashed, but all's fair in love and war, and I don't think that Lanishko has any love for these Ophiums, which are crushing into the old base that used to belong to Adam. But the monkey, there's so much unprotected here, and there's nothing to stop it. They're putting up T2 point defense here, which is the nearest place, but the RT is also finished, and it's smashing up the air grid belonging to Azure, so this is horrific for a cold team. This is certainly a horrific for a hot team, but it's still pretty bad. T1 bombers again being used in defense by Lanishko. What can stop this monkey though, and what can stop this arty? We have a new fatty out from Orson, and that might stop the monkey. Ooh, this is this is looking good though. Four mexes, five mexes, six mexes. Most of these T3, and these there's just not enough T1 fire from these bombers to stop this huge horde of Ophiums. The monkey, however, is under fire from the fatty. We can see artillery fire raining down upon the monkey, and now it's also in range of these T2 point defenses that we saw going up earlier. But look at this: the airbase has just been crushed by the artillery. And yet more mixes going down. Look at this damage. The anti-air in there is doing a number on the bombers. The monkey is trying to retreat to the water, but I don't think it's going to make it. Boom, down goes the monkey. But where one monkey falls, another one approaches. We have a crab and a monkey, the ones we saw fighting off the chickens earlier, advancing with some support on the ground from Lagger's spam. But these gunships from Orson, these broadswords, are going to be able to hold off that monkey. And these Orthiums are still going. This is an amazing raid, and I love it. And we have counter arty coming the other way. We'll see where that's landing in a minute. And as if that weren't enough, more Orthiums have just come smashing across the side and they're getting right into Lagger's power. But the Fatty and a wave of Orthiums advance from Sofa and Orson because they have to stop this Mega before it gets any deeper. And poor Lagger is losing all his power. Finally, a monkey over here has stopped the offensive, but the amount of damage they did is massive, and we've got a crab blocking any reinforcement coming in there. Chicken coming out, and with the support from the fatty having worn down this mega, that chicken should be able to see off this raid. I think we can safely say that both the attacks have been repelled, but both did such an immense amount of damage. So with one damaged monkey still here, there's quite a stalemate with one pond in control of each team, one base in control of each team. Let's have a quick look at Eco. So, Azuros. Lovely balance. I like everything about that, except for this. He needs some energy storage because he's not 100% confident of having full energy all the time, and if he were to suddenly need some energy, he'd be in trouble. He can't overcharge as well. Orson, also pretty nice, though spending a little more. As yours is 500 eco, though. That's just amazing. And so for... He has a lot in storage, so I'm less worried about his flickering um, power bar, but he's spending a lot more. Poor old Lagavulin has had his power smashed by the earlier raid, and he's lost a lot of his mixes. 
so he has no choice but to try and overspend massively and he'll really need to get some energies out for the heaps of reclaim that have been left here and un unsurprisingly lovely balance from the Nishko, good storage not too much overflow on the power but a, a safe amount and a good buffer here which he's using so overall pretty nice from the Nishko. still we have a lead of nearly 200 eco for cold team and that may pay dividends but all the pressure is coming from the hot team at the moment because they have Artie raining down didn't we see an Artie over here not long ago for cold team which has just died so Hot team winning the standoff, and speaking of the standoff, there's another new, and that one's coming out over here. That one's trying to shut down this base from Azuros, and that is not a bad idea because look at this force that he has built up on the coast. I don't know if, despite this heap of bricks, Lanishko has enough to defend. However, Azuros won't be adding to it because kaboom! Down goes his base in nuclear fire. Will he have a response? Well, he might, because there are several battleships now on the field in this northern pond, and of course they can build nukes. And... It looks like Azuros is concentrating his naval and amphibious forces for another push. And uh, it just doesn't feel like there's enough for Lanushko to stop this. However, Olsen is consolidating his fat boy back. He is working slowly on a duke, but it doesn't feel like he's putting enough into it to really make a difference. A chicken has attempted a sneaky little run up the side here from Azuros, but another crab out from Lanishko has seen it off. And T1 bombers are adding to that chicken's woes from the skies. Out come the forces from Azuros, and these bricks are just going to die to the navy, no question. So there's now very little to stop this, and I think Azuros needs to push in with it. If this chicken can join them, that would be quite nice positioning, although it is a little more damaged now. Meanwhile, though, Lunishko is now up to two artillery pieces, and that might break full soon. There's now much less of an air grid for Cold Team, and if Lunishko can break through and take it out, then he will have unquestioned air superiority. However, this is the big attack as the Othiums come in. However, that's a monkey I see there defending from Lanishko and a crab coming in. And the combination of artillery from these T2 emplacements fire from the experimenters and general all-round stuff from the Nishko is enough to force the Othiums back and the chicken is catching up but that's going to be too little too late now that there is both a Mega and a monkey in defense. Mega beats chicken, this Mega is undamaged, this chicken is half damaged and there's a monkey on top of it so that is Azuros having been having been pushed back a bit and it feels like that might be the turning point if they if they'd been able to get some damage in there but now we see that hot team has managed to bring itself ahead in eco again despite the crippling that Lagavulin took earlier from the pushes they've got these two artilleries they've got nuclear um, capability and that artillery is just raining down un unchecked getting some nice damage done on Code Team's base 
and this piece of artillery that Austin has been trying to put up is still barely half done. And what is this? That is an awful lot of Corsairs. Is he going for a snipe? This looks bad, said Orson. And while, if you'd asked me maybe 15 minutes ago to bet on who would win, I would have bet on the Code team. Now I'm inclined to agree with Orson, and I would not rate their chances as highly. I mean, they do still have this force, and we can see that both these battleships are building nukes which could overwhelm the defences of Hot Team if carefully positioned, but this looks like the Corsairs are setting off on a raid. And Orson is coming forward in person to try and drive Lanishko off this pond. There's still a destroyer here, but Orson has only the gun and a few shields to protect him. And this feels unwise and Orson also think it's unwise and he is falling back. We do have another experiment to push from fatties and chickens coming up the middle but that's what these Corsairs are going to go for. They rain their fire down on the experimentals and look at that they're just gonna crush it. The fatties out, the chickens about to go out Boom, and suddenly there's nothing here for Cold Team to apply any pressure with at all. And the artillery has finally broken through into Olsen's base, taking out his artillery, taking out his air grid. He's still got the HQ here, but that feels like only a drop in the metaphorical ocean. Orson just gives everything to Azuros. I think he is... I think he's had it with this game. Can Azuros use that gift to bring things back though? Surfer started on Advanced Nano and he's got T3 so he's trying to make his com as insanely tough as possible. But I think he's having resource issues. Strategic launch detected. And out comes another nuke from... Lanusco heading for the expansion of Azuros and that will take out four T2 mexes, T3 mexes, sorry, so it will pay for itself. Will it? I think it will about pay for itself and it will certainly then pay for itself in the eco that Azuros loses to not having those four mexes for a while. And it's sufficiently far out to that it can't be countered by anti nukes. Meanwhile, the Novak satellite is over here, and the RT breaks through onto surface base as well. And he's trying to get his nano finished, but he's been taking hits from that RT. It feels like we could see these quarters just snipe the comms with no trouble and the advanced nano finishes leaving 44,000 hits on sofa but a few more arty hits like that and 44,000, 4,400 won't make much of a difference sofa has to start dodging but there's still one last trick up as it was to save these battleships are both loaded with nukes. Can he get anything done with them? Orson resigns. I, I, I don't like that positioning. He could have at least allowed his team a bit more of a chance by walking away and blowing himself up rather than wiping out that army. But what's done is done. But with this force of monkeys coming charging in, feels like it's all over but the crying. Both remaining comms in this pond. Where's the nuke attack? We need to see those, those nukes. We also have two chickens here. Maybe Azuros is gambling at all on a last desperate push. Not cool, says Sofa. 
1v1 my com? Nah, says Lunishko. And if I were in Lunishko's shoes, I would agree with him. Here come the monkeys crushing into Cold Team's base. And there is nothing that they can do. Sorry, says Sofa. I mean, he played pretty well. He resigns. Taking out all the engineers supporting that naval yard, but I don't think that that's what Azeroth will have been focusing on. These two chickens come pushing out from the water. But there's a mega and a fat boy lying in wait and I don't believe that those chickens will get very far as soon as Lunishko sees them. He must see them. He does see them. The fat boy opens fire. And the crab also turns around And the Corsairs join in fun, as if that wasn't enough. The Mega is taking some damage, to be fair, but both chickens are going to be slain. Their Ion Storms may kill the Mega, but those two experimentals were just not enough for poor old Azuros. In fact, the Mega might even escape. And the battleships fire their nukes. They're aiming for Lunishko's artillery and power grid. And at some of his air grid. In they come. But there's an anti-nuke. There's more than enough anti-nukes to stop the fire from those battleships. A nuke goes out to take out the navy and Azuros sees it's all over and he resigns. Oh, in the mid game it looked so good for Koa team. What happened? The Nishko, however, proved a master at handling all those fronts. Could Azuros have gone harder into his push from the left island? Should Orson have tried to get his arty up faster? Tell me in the comments below. While you're down there, please don't forget to like, subscribe and obey. I'm the Commissar, and I will see you next time.